So before I import the texture maps into our scene, I want to double check one thing that I probably forgot to mention. Um, I went ahead and adjusted the camera Z position to minus 75 to match the camera in the gauges layer. I want them to, I want the objects from one layer to another in this example to match up in 3D space. So you don't have to do that in your particular project, um, but for this speedometer, it's important that the objects line up as they should. So uh, that's that's just one note about the camera here. Um, and now I can bring in all the texture maps associated with this uh, with this cluster or with this gauge. So in the project library, if I right click and choose import resource and go to my uh, texture maps folder and select all of the texture maps associated with it and choose open, we'll see here that all of the texture maps are loaded into the project library. And I'm going to start out with the round bezel object here. And this texture map, or this material called glossy, receives a uh, round bezel texture map in its diffuse map channel. So I'm going to go ahead and choose round bezel, load that in the into the uh, diffuse map channel. And it's kind of hard to see because I've got a bunch of objects blocking it. So let me go ahead and just hide the gauges group just for a moment. And as we can see, maybe it's not so clear on on the video, but there's a little bit of some graininess to this texture map, and that's just the compression quality. If for for some reason you need an object to be a little more higher quality than the rest of the objects in your scene, if it's on all the time and it's large and you, you kind of need it to look better than it does on import, um, that's very easy to uh, to change. If you select the texture map in question, so in this case it's the round bezel um, dot ping, the uh, PNG file. If I go down here to the compression, we see that it's set to DXT5, smooth alpha, by default. And so that's kind of the default compression that Studio gives images as they come in. Uh, if I want a higher quality, I can just simply choose uncompressed DDS. And at least for me, I can see that it looks a lot smoother and a little more higher quality. So we'll just go ahead and stick with that. And next, let's go ahead and add the texture maps to our speedometer. And to do that, I'm going to first isolate all the objects in my group that um, are static, so that they're, they're going to be unmoving in my animation. And I'm just going to move them to the bottom of the list just to keep track of um, objects just a little bit better. So the lens, the lens object in my speedometer is static. The uh, let's see what else. Center gradient, that's those two parallel gradients in the center. Those are unchanging, so I'm going to move those to the bottom. I'm going to move the needle up to the top, so I always know where that's located and it's easier to access. And for now, I think that's good. Um, I'm ready to add the texture maps. Uh, so the needle, as we remember earlier, receives the alpha common texture map. And we see that texture map showing up here at the very bottom of this gauge. It's kind of hard to see. If I zoom in a little bit, we see it here. And I want to give it a color so that um, it's a little more interesting and has a little more energy. So I'm going to select the material and shoot, change the uh, diffuse color to a real nice blue, maybe a kind of electric blue. I'm going to add that color to my custom palette here so I can reuse that color if I need to. Let's do something like that. Say OK. And so now I changed the, uh, the needle to blue the, by just adjusting the diffuse color. And if you want to make it a little brighter, kind of make it glow a little bit, you can bump up the emissive value to maybe 50. So that's the that's the needle. The graphic ring is next.
and the graphic green gets the alpha common texture map. The numerals receive the numeral speedometer and numeral speedo texture map. That also receives an opacity map that fades the numbers around this uh, this circle here. However, I'm going to leave the opacity map off just so I can line up my needle during animation. And then at that point, I can add the opacity map and then animate it as well. Um, so for now, I'm going to leave it off. And one, one more thing I'm going to do is just kind of hide the objects that aren't currently texture mapped just to, so we can see how uh, the objects take shape after you put the correct texture map on them. So if we look at the needle, we can see it a little more clearly now. Graphic ring, if I go ahead and just move this, you can see, see the graphic ring there. We've got the numeral set up, of course. The uh, inner gradient is going to be that sweeping blue sort of faded color that follows the needle around the gauge. And so I'm going to use that same blue that I assigned to the needle earlier. Just go ahead and add that. And I'm going to bump its emissive power all the way up to 100. So that's the inner gradient. It, it uh, receives an opacity map, uh, so I animate the opacity map over time. So I'm, so I'm going to choose the inner gradient texture map here under my opacity map channel. And so we can already see what that looks like here. And so the the opacity map needs to be set correctly so I can animate it um, properly. So the the tiling in the U direction will be set to uh, it will, it'll remain at no tiling, but the V tiling will be set to tiling or tiled. That way, if I animate the sorry the uh, U position, it'll stretch it it'll stretch around onto the uh, the surface of the geometry, it'll, it won't tile. So when I move the actual U position, it's not going to repeat. It's going to actually slide across the surface. To show you the difference, I'm going to set that to tiled and then move the U position and see how it, it'll keep going around and around. And it essentially tiles. If I set it to no tiling, we see that it stops at a certain point. So this is what we want because I don't want the, the blue shade to go past the zero, the zero mark. Just to show it one more time. It's a pretty important concept. So this is with the U tiling turned on. We can see that it's going past the zero marker, which is not what we want. We want it to stop there. Um, in fact, it's, it's um, this is sort of the cutoff point for it. So there we go. So no tiling, and I need to set its default value so that when I begin animating, I can just set a keyframe down and it'll be ready to go. So let's try maybe negative 0.95. That's not quite close enough. Maybe 9.6, almost. 9.7, perfect. So that's the default position for that, that gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. And next on our list is the speed scroll. So the speed scroll receives the texture map called speed scroller. And as we can see, the numbers are stretched. So I need to uh, squeeze in the texture map or adjust its U and V repeat to correctly get the no numbers proportional and looking correctly. So if I select the diffuse map in the timeline and go to the inspector, the uh, inspector palette, I can adjust the U and the V repeat. Uh, so for now, I'm going to set this to maybe 1.4, maybe the V repeat to 0.6, maybe 0.4. There we go. That looks pretty good. And now if I move it down. Let's go ahead and move it in the U position just slightly. 
So if I move it down in the V position, we see that it's it's set up correctly now. Um, so what I want to happen is the number. Um, so if the so let me back up just a little bit. If the needle is at say 40 miles per hour, the speed squirrel indicator is going to show 40 in the center of the gauge, and so I need a way to focus that. And one way to do that is to set up a mask that fades the numerals off in the uh, white position um, from the center up and from the center down. So the center remains opaque and then it fades up and then it fades down. And so I'm simply going to add a, a mask or some kind of an opacity map to, to do that, to adjust its fall off. Um, and that's simple. So select your material. So in this case, the speed scroll material. And I'm going to assign the speed scroll gradient or speed scroll grad texture map to the opacity map channel. So as we see here, it, uh, it fades from the center up and from the center down with a nice fall off. So now I need to set the default value for the texture map in the uh, V position here. So we'll just set it to zero, just like that. And let's go ahead and bump up the emissive value. Actually, instead of adjusting the emissive power, let's go ahead and just give it the, the blue color first. And then as we adjust the emissive power, let's say 50, we get the, uh, the result that we want there. And we can always change this later. This is just to kind of get it set up. All right, so now we've got the inner gradient ticks. And these are the tick marks that are going to populate around the, uh, the gauge. And so similar to the inner gradient, going to bump the emissive power all the way up. And in this case, I'm going to give it the inner gradient ticks texture map and give it the inner gradient opacity map. So as we see here, it fades off over, you know, over a distance. And that will match up with our blue gradient that also fades off over that same distance because they're using the same inner gradient opacity map. Uh, the one thing I want to do though is adjust the, the spacing between the, the uh, tick marks here. So if I select the diffuse map and go to the, uh, let's say the U repeat, uh, let's do about 1. Point, yeah, 1 point 1.8 is pretty good. So I like that spacing. Let's keep that. And now we need to set the U and V tiling similar to how we adjusted it on the inner gradient. So in this case, on the opacity map, since that's the, the map that's going to be animated in the uh, U position, I believe. Yeah, see, that, that's not cutting off correctly, so I need to adjust its U and V positions. It's cutting off right here and then down here, but I don't want it to do that, so I need to adjust the U tiling to be set to no tiling, which it currently is, and the V tiling to tiled. So now, um, actually it's still still not working correctly, so I think I need to set the diffuse map instead, so let's go ahead and try that. So no tiling, and then tiled. Let's set this to tiled and no tiling. And let's see if we get the, the desired effect. Select the opacity map. Nope. So this is a good, this is actually a good problem to, to talk about. So let's go ahead and fix this.